Good morning. In addition to our Mass intentions, let us also remember this day our first and frontline responders, our local faith communities, and our family and friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, gather this day giving thanks and praise to Almighty God. We once again open our minds and hearts to his ongoing call to mercy, healing, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O Lord, show favor to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that strengthen in faith, hope, and charity. We may always be vigilant in keeping your commands. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears day and night without rest over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her, her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest forage in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not. Disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Among the nation's idols, is there any that gives rain? Or can the mere heavens send showers? Is it not you alone, O Lord, our God, to whom we look? You alone have done all these things. The word of the Lord. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. 
just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. It's far too easy to volunteer somebody who's not at the meeting. We've all been in that situation. Oh, he'll do it, she'll do it. They're always really good sports about it, so just give that that little project to them. Even though they're not here to say yes or no, depending upon what their schedule is and what they have to do, they'll take care of it. We do that instinctively. Our instincts, however, have become somewhat dulled. Instinctively, as Christians, our first thing is to thank God. Our very first thing, before we ask for anything whatsoever, our first call is to thank God. That we have been given life as his children through the waters of baptism. But somewhere along the line, the novelty wears off. And we start to play the blame game. In the first reading, there's a lot of blame being thrown upon God. Why have you done this? Why haven't you done something different? Why haven't you stepped in and made it better? Well, why? Why? We ask those same questions when a loved one dies. Why did God take that person now? They had so much more to live for. There was so much more that they wanted to accomplish and to do in this life. Why did God do this? Well, a little common sense, a little logic, Mr. Spock. God didn't do that. But what did God do? Did God not plant in our hearts compassion? Is that seed not growing? Does it not come to fruition like the mustard seed or the yeast in the leaven and the bread? Does it not rise within us and cause us to go out of our way to be compassionate to someone who is hurting, someone who is suffering? That's what God does. We have to listen. We have to understand what God really does. God is not the magical Santa Claus that sometimes we have in our little baby minds and hearts. Oh, throw up a few prayers to God. He'll be happy and he'll give me whatever I want. Even Jesus says, if you ask in faith, God will give you whatever you need. But what do you really need? Do you need things? Do you need power? Do you need aggression? Do you need to be better than someone else? That's all human stuff. It has nothing to do with the spiritual life. In the spiritual life, if you are a child of God, what you need is to understand who God is. Understand fully and completely what God calls you to be as his son or daughter. And then, with the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the one who is with us until the end of time, Do the will of God. Not our own will, but the will of God. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is the role model. Human and divine. He struggles with the two. From the human standpoint, as do we, struggle with that same human and divine within ourselves. But which one wins out in the end? It is the divine. If you're anxious, wondering, afraid, confused, is this life of faith worth it? Read the book of Revelations. 
In the end, we win. We win. Because we are faithful, because we struggle with that faith, because we struggle to be compassionate, to go out of our way, to meet the needs of others, because we struggle to be fair and just, all of these things that Christ talks about in the scriptures are real here and now, today in the 21st century, for you and for me. They are real. And the power is when they change us when they shape and fashion us, when they open us to the power of Christ in the Eucharist, and truly we become that which we receive, the body of Christ. And so, my sisters and brothers, explaining the parable is nice. Understanding the parable is essential. Living the parable, that's another story because that is the story that you and I write every day. Struggle to be the mustard seed. Struggle to be the yeast that brings the leaven of hope and compassion to the world each day. It is not an easy challenge, especially in the days we enter into now. But we win. If you need a little boost of morale, read the book of Revelations. We win. And so do not give up hope. Do not give up your faith. Struggle to live the gift that God has given you and the gift you are becoming for the world each day. My sisters and brothers, gather this day in faith and hope and confidence. We offer our prayers of petition to the Lord who truly hears and answers. For the church, that we might find ways to both preach the word and serve our neighbor, especially during these times of challenge, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, that they may promote life, peace, and justice, and work together for the common good, we pray to the Lord. For all those who feel isolated or alone, that God may calm their fears and lead them into peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are in need of God's healing power and blessing, and for those who have died, that they may enjoy the light, happiness, and peace of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers, hopes, and petitions we hold this day in the silence of our hearts. Father of mercy and Lord of all compassion, in your kindness, hear and answer the prayers we offer in faith this day. And by the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, continue opening the minds and the hearts of your faithful people throughout the world. By that same Spirit, may we become the mercy, compassion, and healing to your world each day. We make our prayer this day and always, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, and the sacrifices of our own lives, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, in the one perfect sacrifice, you brought to completion the varied offerings of the law. Accept this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy, as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your name may be for the benefit and salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask. By that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, Gerald and Alberto, the bishops of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. United this day in voice and heart, and joining Christians throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, we once again echo the prayer of the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church gathered here this day and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, for our world, for those who are around us and most dear to us, we offer a sign of peace this day. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ My sisters and brothers, at this time I invite you to pray the prayer for a spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord, graciously be present to your people on a daily basis, and lead those you have filled with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways into a newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Again, as a simple reminder, uh, we are continuing our communion well, not distribution, it's the vehicle communion line that we have been doing on Sundays and did yesterday. We'll do it again today. Uh, there again, following this Mass, there will be just the outline of the requirements that you fully participated in this Mass, are in a state of grace, etc. And from 8.45 until 9 a.m. this morning, as you enter from uh, gate number one off of Boys Republic Drive, just come in, park in the parking lot, get out of your vehicle, and come over to the point, uh, the doors of the church for communion distribution. The Lord be with you. May the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remaining with you now and forever. Our celebration is ended. We go forth throughout this day to love and serve the Lord.